shocking pop culture moments that you completely forgot about. From the good, the bad, and the downright what the f On this episode of Shocking Pop Culture Moments You Completely Forgot About, I'll talk about Paris Hilton, Sharkeisha, and many more. I know part one came out like a year ago, and I'm sorry for putting it off for so long because I keep forgetting about it. Enjoy. When I saw Ariana Grande on the program, I thought that was a new something at Taco Bell. In the 2000s, YouTube wasn't as serious and corporate as it is today. And let's not even talk about early 2010s YouTube. YouTube used to be wild. Launched on February 14, 2005 by Stephen Chen, Chad Hurley, and Jod Karim, three former employees of PayPal. The platform was loved for its AMVs, parody videos, and funny short clips like that Charlie Bit My Finger video. Unlike today where someone is always going viral on the platform, that wasn't the case in the mid-2000s. Yeah, people were going viral, but it wouldn't spill over into the mainstream. In 2007, internet personality Chris Crocker, who was already posting regularly on YouTube, would post a video on September 10, 2007, titled Leave Britney Alone Part 2, following Part 1, which was posted on their MySpace page a day prior. Do we really want to see a 25-year-old woman leave behind two children and die? Have we learned nothing from Anna Nicole Smith? I know it's hard to see Britney Spears as a human being, but trust me, she is. She's a person. She's like you or I. Chris posted the video showing empathy for pop star Britney Spears, who was being heavily dragged by the mainstream media and gossip blogger Paris Hilton at the time. After Britney's comeback performance at the 2007 MTV VMAs was being shitted on by everyone. Now, some of y'all might have been too young in 2007, but it was a crazy and scandalous period for Britney Spears. Britney was the most searched person in 2007 on the internet, and it was all for the wrong reasons. And for those who've never seen the Leave Britney Alone video, here you go. And how fucking dare anyone out there make fun of Britney after all she's been through? She lost her aunt. She went through a divorce. She had two kids her husband turned out to be a user a cheater and now she's going through a custody battle all you people care about is readers and making money off of her she's a human what you don't realize is that Britney's making you all this money and all you do is write a bunch of crap about her she hasn't performed on stage in years her song is called Give Me More for a Reason because all you people want is more, 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 more! Leave her alone! You're lucky she even performed for you bastards! Leave Benny alone! Please! <laughs> The video went viral before going viral was a thing, accumulating over 2 million views in its first 24 hours after its posting, and by 2009 the video had over 24 million views. With over 500,000 comments, the video was also one of the most discussed videos on the platform. The public's reaction to the video ranged from some feeling the pain to some thinking it was funny turning it into a meme. I remember watching the video as a kid and couldn't stop laughing, not that I didn't believe it, but it was just ridiculous and melodramatic, as I've never seen anything like that. In the video they made crying sounds, but you couldn't really see any tears, and maybe that's because of the 2007 quality? I don't know. Chris got a lot of publicity from the video as he went on a variety of talk shows including Maury. America, I want you to know that before I'm an American, I'm a Britney fan. <laughs> and becoming a pop culture phenomenon that really helped to shape YouTube into what it is today, really. The video was later removed from the platform along with their entire channel, but you can still find re-uploads. 
Now, if you're wondering what happened to this man, well, he is no longer a man as he has transitioned into a woman named Kara Cunningham. And based on what I found out on the internet, they don't really identify as one gender, but both. And if you're wondering if Britney acknowledged Kara, she did. In the heights of the Leave Britney Alone period, a source told USMagazine.com, Britney does not think Chris Crocker is funny, she thinks he is creepy, and that all his videos are an obvious attempt at fame. She finds it insulting and difficult to watch. And in 2022, Britney also reposted a video of Kara on her IG stories with no context. Keeping on trend with the 2000s, before Kim Kardashian and Heidi Montag, we had Paris Hilton. The saying being famous for being famous was probably created after the rise of Paris Hilton in the 2000s. That's hot. 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 This is hot. That's hot. Born Paris Whitney Hilton, February 17, 1981, she's a descendant of Conrad Hilton, the guy that funded the Hilton Hotels and Resorts in 1919. Paris rose to fame in the 2000s as a model slash socialite, and be real, she was seen as a white, blonde, ditzy stereotype that was always going to clubs and having paparazzi following her everywhere she went. Legend has it she called her own paparazzi. Now, as I said, Paris was best known for being a party girl back in the day, but she landed her own reality TV show, The Simple Life, along with her then friend Nicole Richie. And yes, her ex is what really made her a worldwide phenomenon which came out coincidentally around the same time of her reality show, The Simple Life. In 2007, Hollywood was shaken to its core when Paris went to jail for the first time. It all started in 2006 when Paris was first arrested and charged with driving under the influence of alcohol. As a result, she had her driver's license suspended. According to The Sun, the heiress of Hilton Hotels pleaded no contest in January 2007 to a charge of reckless driving. She was handed a 36-month probation period and had to pay $1,500 in fines. Hilton was then stopped the following month for driving without her license and she signed a petition agreeing she was forbidden from driving. But... In March 2007, Hilton was spotted driving twice the speed limit, 70 miles per hour in a 35 miles per hour zone, without headlights on at night, with a suspended license. The Los Angeles City Attorney argued that Hilton's driving breaches and failure to attend court-ordered alcohol education program violated her parole conditions. On May 4, 2007, Hilton was sentenced 45 days in jail for the non-compliance by Judge Michael T. Sawyer at the Century Regional Detention Facility facility in Linwood, California. But in a shocking turn of events, Paris was reassigned to house arrest with an electronic monitoring device due to an undisclosed illness, which was later revealed to be panic attacks and anxiety. This caused outrage, and many saw this as, you know, celebrities getting special treatment, causing Judge Sawyer summoning her back to court the following morning and order she serve the rest of her sentence behind bars. Paris is back in. A judge has ordered Paris Hilton back to jail to serve out her full 45-day sentence behind bars. The ruling comes just one day after her early release. She was taken from the court screaming and crying. Get just back. to tell the world how your get daughter's back. doing. She's very, She's very scared. scared. This was the pandemonium outside the Hilton's home as authorities picked her up. Oh. Hey, hey! Hilton was apparently handcuffed before she got in the patrol car. Here you can see her in tears inside. She continued crying throughout the hearing and shouted, it's not right, after the ruling. The judge heard arguments. He heard out the county counsel's office representing the sheriff. He heard the defense. He heard the city attorney. He ruled that he was remanding Ms. Hilton to the sheriff's custody to serve the remainder of her sentence at the Century Regional Detention. No! Now, some of y'all might be too young to remember this, but it was a big thing in 2007. It was all over TV and an early YouTube, and it was also parodied, of course. Now, I don't know about you, but I found the whole situation hilarious. How on the day she was going to jail or court, I can't really remember, but she's going to jail and she was being driven by her mother in Hollywood with the windows down she was crying Paris was crying the windows weren't tinted like 
she's Paris Hilton, you'd think they would try to shield her a bit or have security you know, drove her maybe, I don't know, it all seemed like attention seeking or milking it for more fame because they know the paparazzi where they're recording. In my opinion, it was all a big stunt, a very elaborate stunt. Yes, she was already famous, but she got even more famous and went on to do so much. After that, movies, music, that TV show on MTV, she really showed the world, hey, you don't have to have talent to be successful, and she really set the trends for a lot of people like the Kardashians. David Hasselhoff is a beloved American actor who is best known for his roles in The Young and the Restless and his role in the iconic series Baywatch. He's also in the 2004 Spongebob Squarepants movie where he played himself. Who are you? I'm David Hasselhoff. And he was also a judge on America's Got Talent. The actor is loved by many and had maintained a pretty scandal-free and wholesome image throughout his career until, wait for it, Yes, 2007. In early May 2007, a video filmed by his daughter Taylor Ann showed Hasselhoff appearing to be severely drunk inside his home was uploaded onto the internet. In the video, you can hear his daughter saying, tell me that you promise you're not gonna get alcohol and you're gonna stop drinking, while David Hasselhoff struggles to eat a burger while spitting out gibberish. Tell me that you promise you're not gonna get alcohol and you're gonna stop drinking. Now, it's obvious the video was released because David was an and to teach him a lesson and to get sober. Now, was the video spontaneous? No. Hasselhoff actually asked his daughters to tape him if he were to ever relapse. Now, he did get some backlash for the video back then, but most were sympathetic, shocked, and some thought it was funny. As a result of the video, Hasselhoff's visitation rights with his two daughters were suspended on May 7, 2007 for two weeks until the video's authenticity and distributor were determined. And how does David Hasselhoff feel about the video years later? Well, he laughs about it. And as he should. Southern Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. That will- Next on the list is Tara Reid. Tara Reid is an American actress whose career went downhill after she had an unfortunate wardrobe malfunction. Believe it or not, Tara Reid was an in-demand it girl in her prime, starring in Josie and the Pussycats, My Boss's Daughter, and yes, American Pie. The actress had a nip slip in 2004 on the red carpet at Dirty Diddy's birthday party. While on the red carpet posing, her nipple got exposed, causing the photographers to be in a frenzy, and it's sad as none of them alerted her. And you know, Tara thinking that they were just glad to see her, you know, them going well for her, she just kept smiling and posing until a publicist saved her from the upcoming embarrassment. It didn't help that she had a scar on her nipple either. Now, the media in the early 2000s was ruthless. They made fun of her, the scar, they said it looked hideous, all types of fucked up comments. Now, after that moment, her career went downhill as no one took her serious, along with the media always reporting on her messy life, and she kind of just disappeared until she made a 2013 comeback in the widely popular ridiculous shitstorm sci-fi series Sharknado, a show about a water spout that lifts sharks out of the ocean and deposits them in Los Angeles. <laughs> now, what's Tara's up to now? Well, as I mentioned, mainstream Hollywood isn't taking her serious right now, but she was able to book Amazon's The Boys in 2009, where she made a guest appearance as herself, and she was in a bunch of reality TV shows, Marriage Boot Camp, where it was all a lie, for TV, and Big Brother, where she was voted off. The news can be a source of reputable information for everyone, and it can also be a source of straight foolery, which I'm about to get into. Well, just in time for St. Patrick's Day, crowds are coming by the dozens to get an up-close view at what some say is a piece of Irish folk folklore. Some people in the Crichton area of Mobile say a leprechaun. 
is taking up residence in their neighborhood. A leprechaun. According to its own Wikipedia page, the Crichton Leprechaun, also known as the Mobile Leprechaun and Alabama Leprechaun, is a supposed sighting of a leprechaun in a tree in Crichton, a neighborhood of Mobile, Alabama. Following a 2006 news report filed at the local NBC-affiliated WPMI-TV, Curiosity leads to large crowds in Mobile's Crichton community. Many of you bring binoculars, camcorders, even camera phones to take pictures. To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. I got to do look up in the tree. Who else seen the leprechaun say yeah? yeah! yeah! Eyewitnesses say the leprechaun only comes out at night. If you shine a light in its direction, it suddenly disappears. This amateur sketch resembles what many of you say the leprechaun looks like. Others find it hard to believe and have come up with their own theories and explanations for the image. My theory is it's casting a shadow from the other limb. Could be a crackhead that got hold to the wrong stuff. And it told him to get up in a tree and play a leprechaun. The video was posted on YouTube on St. Patrick's Day 2006 and became one of the first YouTube's viral videos and was referenced in mainstream media. In the news clip, people from the Mobile, Alabama neighborhood were festive and excited about the leprechaun sighting. Don't be afraid, man. This guy helping to direct traffic says he's prepared for his encounter with the leprechaun. He's suited up from head to toe. This water's all smells right here. This is a special leprechaun flute, which has been passed down from thousands of years ago from my great-great-grandfather. Lord Irish. Jesus. I just came to help out. Others just came to get lucky in hopes a pot of gold may be buried under this tree. I'm going to run a back hole and uproot that tree. I want to know where the gold is. I want the gold. Give me the gold. I want the gold. This is Brian Johnson, NBC 15. Since the video's upload, it has been widely mocked on shows like Key and Peele and South Park. And political commentator Bill O'Reilly debated whether or not the video perpetuated racial stereotypes. And in 2023, the sign-up shop source started printing out cardboard cutouts of the Crichton Leprechaun and sold them. And last but not least, Sharkeisha. Now, the situation I remember it like it was yesterday, probably one of the first videos to go viral on Twitter, back when I was exposed to Twitter, back when Twitter now X was popping, okay? It's not like Twitter now that is boring and just full of lies. Twitter was popping back in the day. Now, I'm not going to show the video because of YouTube's guidelines and I want to get paid for this video. So I'll describe what happened. So in the video, you saw two girls in the video, then one of the girls named Sharkeisha hits the other one right in the face. Bruh, she fucked her up. And you hear in the background, you hear someone saying, Sharkeisha, no. Now, why did Sharkeisha did this? Because the other girl took her mans. Shamichael, the victim, told news networks that she was set up by her friends and she was completely blindsided. Now, I'm not going to talk about this anymore because most of the YouTubers I see talked about this. Um, even back in the day, all of those all of those videos were age restricted. And as I said, I want to get paid for this video. So if you want to know anything else about Miss Sharkeisha, because, you know, there was just so many rumors going around about her at the time. Um, yeah, do your own research. Because, hey, I want to get paid for this video, and I might even cut this entire Sharkeisha segment out of the video completely. But yeah, that was a huge, huge pop culture moment that I don't really see a lot of people talking about anymore. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Tell me in the comments other old pop culture moments or old viral moments that I missed. And if you want to continue this series with a part 3, let me know in the comments. And I was going to end this video with the, um, the Tyrion Milton situation. Remember that little boy who was on the news for stealing his grandma's car? But then I was like, nah, that's always remembered and will never be forgotten. Maybe he'll get a dedicated video instead, one day, if y'all want that. Anyway, I'm tired and I'm going to go to bed. So like the video and subscribe. I am Don, your pop culture boy, and I will see you in the next one.